This is Gabriel Gonzalez for Cage Set Press here with LFA title challenger Sabina Mazo making her return for the belt against Sandra Lovado on August 4th in El Paso, Texas. Uh, Sabina, it's been a minute since we've seen you in the cage. Uh, I have to imagine the emotions are starting to gear up a little bit more than usual as you're finally back about to be in a fight. Yes, I'm super happy, super excited. Um, like you said, it's been it's been a little bit, and I'm just happy to go back and and fight. You know, that's what I'm wanting for so long. Uh, can we go back a little bit because obviously you had a fight scheduled for about last December. Uh, got hurt. Obviously, you had to pull out of the fight. Just um, walk me through what happened a bit and a bit of the rehab and recovery to get back to this point. Yeah, so it was December. Um, I broke my leg. It was, it was very weird because I really didn't feel any pain at all. And it was a very kind of fast, um, let's say recovery, or um, at least I didn't stop, you know, like everything I could do, I did training wise. Um, I went to the gym every single day to learn. So I took it as a, you know, a recovery for sure, but still like learning, not just like oh, I'm going to stop training and learning and not going to the gym. So it went by fast, pretty quick. Uh, on February or January, I was already like doing everything. So yeah, um, that's what kind of happened in that recovery. Then I started preparing for any fight I was trying to fight and, you know, different fight camps from my friends here, Pieta and Jackie. And then, you know, here I am finally fighting in and, in less than, you know, 11 days or 10. I want to ask you about that because you brought them up. You know, Black House is, you know, historically, you know, there's many legends who really built it, you know, in the beginning, you know, Anderson Silva, Leoto, the Nogueras, um, a lot of legends who built it. And yet when you look at Black House, and I do notice this, um, most likely because it's really pushed by our friend uh, Emily Herman over there, the women yes. of Black House really leading the way. I mean, you have three LFA champions, all female. For you, the gym has so much history. What's it like for you to be a part of this new generation that's really carrying the flag for that team in big fights? It's amazing. You know, it's an honor. Like you said, big, big names have passed through this gym. Um and just making it as a female generation, it's amazing. You know, this is the new era where women are like fighting. They, they're they representing. So for me, it's just an honor. And it's also a very nice environment with the girls. We have a very nice team. We help each other. And I think that um, is the most important, you know, that you have teammates and people that are looking uh, for you. You know, they got your back as the same way as, as I got theirs. Can I ask you a bit, because you were the first one to win an LFA title. You were, you know, for the women over there, uh, if not the first one of the earlier ones to make it into UFC and obviously be there for a minute. So would you say you're kind of like the big sister with Piera and Jackie as, you know, now they followed you, they get LFA titles, they go to UFC. Would you say you're the big sister for the crew of the women? Um, no, I wouldn't say I'm like the big sister, to be honest. I don't know. I, I, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. We're all like kind of the same. Well, Jackie and me were the same age as well. So I don't consider myself the big sister. I just see them as my sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Three peas in a pod then, as they would say. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Um, uh, To talk about that, uh, I always wonder... I think people forget because you got into UFC so young and, you know, you started your career and it really kicked off with LFA and everything very quickly. Uh, you're only, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, 26, correct? Correct. I mean, that look, obviously you have a lot of contenders. Many people don't even make it into the UFC until a little bit older and, you know, get more experience. For yourself, what would you say is the biggest thing you've been able to grow in your game since being on the big stage and obviously the work that you've put in in the last year as well, just in the gym? You know, for sure, experience. I All these years, I've been getting a lot of experience. Um, and the past year where I could like take some time off from competition, 
is just growing the skills. You know, it's a moment where you can focus 100% on growing on your game plan, on evolving as a fighter. Because when you're competing, yes, you have some time frame after fights where you can just learn different techniques. But when you're in fight camp, you have to polish those things and it's going to be a little bit more towards a, a certain fight and, and your opponent. So the past year has been amazing to have that more time to just learn and grow and, and get better. Yeah. Um, to talk a little bit more about what's been going on with you lately, uh, training camp. I know that you guys, you were helped out with, you know, the very humble Kenny Johnson and his wrestling camp uh, last week over in big bear uh, talk to me a little bit about that, because I think some fighters may be like, well, obviously, yes, I want to work wrestling, but as we're at the end of camp, you want to be working on everything a little more specific. Can you just talk about the decision to be a part of that and really get that really wrestling-centric work in so close to the end of camp? Yeah, you know, um, they got to have a good team. So we did, like, not only wrestling, but the striking part, the conditioning work, um of course we we did all the sessions of the wrestling camp so you know it's about organizing and, and being part of it and also using the benefits of it uh big bear it's of course altitude so i also wanted to be part of the of the camp because of that and um yeah i'm super happy i went there because it's good energy like i said kenny is always uh super energetic mm -hmm. and it's good it's good i think um it was just adding those more details and extras that i know can help me for this fight and to talk about sandra lovato just what do you think of her game and her style and what she's going to bring out there in the cage she's a warrior you know her nickname uh peruvian zombie says it all she can you know handle punches she goes through she's not going to surrender I just expect the, the best out of her, you know, I'm hungry and I want that belt. So I just want for both of us to be in the cage and, and give our best. Then uh, I have heard you talk about it. You and I have talked about this a bit. You always focus in on the fight in front of you to think ahead can be distracting, take you out of the moment. Um, I would be remiss if I don't bring it up, though. Usually LFA champions get called or in your case would be called back to the UFC. I have to imagine that that is the ultimate goal and that is what you would hope for if you get this victory. Yeah, you know, um, for sure, I'm 100 percent ready to go back, but I'm not rushing anything. If I have to fight again, I will. Um, I'm climbing again. I'm building myself those victories and. You know, I'm I'm focused on one single thing right now, and it's in August 4th. So after that, uh, we'll see what comes. And then to ask you for a few things outside of your fight, obviously your good buddy Alex Pereira fights this Saturday, moving up in weight, big fight with the former champion in Jan Blahovic. Just uh, how do you think he's going to do at 205? I think he's going to do great. He's already a very 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 big dude so i think uh size is not going to be a problem at all for this fight um and i think he's going to shock the world again you know i'm i'm really rooting for him and hopefully he gets this victory can i ask because uh, i'm assuming you're not out there sparring him like you know so like a crazy person and some of these other guys but we see the clips go out online you know he's doing what looks like it's light sparring but then he just, it seems like he barely touches guys in the body and they're going down and they're stopped and they're done. Uh, it, is this a real thing? Like, do you see this happen in the gym? He's just so got that power that it's just scary that he doesn't need to touch you that much. You know, yeah, when, when I was there training uh, in Connecticut, um, it's crazy the how subtle he is, how like, you don't think he's going to punch hard, but he has that natural power in it. You know, he doesn't need to force it or like try too hard. So I really believe he he he's like dropping people like that. And then uh, finally, uh, we talked about it a little bit. Um, a, a Colombian, you love coffee just like I do. I'm also part Colombian. Um, uh, have we made any progress, you know, getting the Sabina Mazo barista show or the you know, the Sabina Mazo coffee talk, where are we at with this uh, part of your career? 
are where it's more it's closer and closer you know as soon as i was i was gonna start my episodes i signed for the fight so you know it's kind of hard it's priorities right now it's fighting so but it's very soon i'm i'm planning everything for after my fight and then is there like a dream guest you would want to sit down to have a cup of coffee with on camera well there's so many but you know um i want to start with a lot of girls uh from mma especially but women athlete i think that's going to be a little bit more the focus in my uh desire because i want to understand how our brains work you know and how the competition works and in 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 different sports as women and then my final question uh cuz this is one my family has always brought up uh particularly with my dad um so when you go to the grocery store and you see like the folgers and all that the coffee there's always colombian roast and every real colombian will tell you who has tried the colombian roast in america that is not colombian roast that is illegal to put colombian roast on the folgers <laughs> do you agree with this is it illegal do they need to change it it is not you can't call it colombian coffee it's just nowhere near what it's supposed to be No, I think they should leave it like that. It's fine. They can believe it's Colombian, but whenever they go, really go to Colombia and try the coffee, each one is going to say like, "Wow, this is this is a real thing." So they can keep thinking it is that that way until, you know, they really try from the source and that's when they realize it's it's way better. You know, it's like it's being told it's Italian gelato and then it's like, you know, 711 ice cream. It, you just can't be doing this to people Sabina. I, in my I, opinion, but okay, I respect yeah. it. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> uh finally, uh what can fans expect when they tune in to watch you uh next Friday uh at NLFA for the title? Um I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to get that belt like, to give a show. I hope no one misses it because I am very very excited to show my skills and everything I've been working the past years. So yeah, don't miss it. Well, Sabina, best of luck. We're always looking forward to it. We're expecting another good one. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Sabina Mazo, Sandra Lovato, August 4th, LFA, El Paso, Texas. Watch live on UFC Fight Pass. You guys are not going to want to miss it.